to say, really appreciate you being here. Uh, I know you've got a lot going on. Um, maybe we can just start with a brief introduction uh, and we'll go from there. Yeah, sure. So um, thank you, Cindy. Uh, so high level, um, my background is in design. So experience design, um, specifically so for the last almost 20 years, focusing on, you know, how software comes together. How do you think about product and how do you think about research around that? Um, my overall sort of work in this space has been in agencies and, and also in consultancies, most recently with McKinsey and company for the last four and a half years. And right now, um, associate partner at uh, BCG. I also lead uh, Awesome, which is a, um, a not-for-profit um, venture development organization and, and angel uh, network. Um, and so basically what we do is focus on how we help, you know, founders, um, mostly underrepresented founders, um, structure themselves, structure their ideas, um, remove growth blockers, and get on a path to uh, meeting investors who are um, writing checks, which we help facilitate. Um, it's an offshoot of a, of a program that I ran at McKinsey. Um, I was a global lead for a program that connected startups to to McKinsey offices around the world. And um, uh, so I got to see startups from all over. And, and so for me, that was sort of a, a signal to say like, hey, this is a space to, to really look deeper in and to be more active in. And um, yeah, and, and awesome was it was an offshoot from, from, that to, from that experience. So happy Very to be here. Awesome, yeah. awesome. Uh, let's dive right in. You know, as you approach angel investing, what's your current investment thesis? So the current thesis is funny because we have a uh, impact focus, explicit, you know, pretty explicitly. So we tend to look at um, companies that are essentially making the world work for more people. I mean, this is no really, you know, other, other way to say it than, than that. So, and specifically, um, that correlates to healthcare, education, financial services, um, for the most part. Um, mm -hmm. The thesis is, is really focused on um, what I like to call uh, like aspirin grade or vaccine grade startups, right? So people who are actually solving real pain points that um, are like must have solutions or people who are um, in uh, preventing uh, something that we can all see um, as, as, as uh, you know, really high risk areas that, that um, companies or, or um, groups of people don't want to be caught in the middle of. So for me, I, I just always go back to that um, test as part of my bias um, as a designer is really, you know, how are you, like, what pain are you relieving? And is, is it in fact, um, you know, better 5x, 10x than the way people are currently alleviating it now? So for me, once a startup, you know, aligns towards the sectors and aligns from a value proposition perspective to this like either aspirin or vaccine grade um, check, uh, you know, versus I should say, versus something that's vitamin, which, which you see a lot of, um, or something that's, you know, like candy, you know, which, which in some cases could be okay, depending on, on the audience, but, but I tend to like, like pain relievers and, and like pay, pain avoidance and startups. How do you further filter that thesis, uh, maybe by sector or by geo, as you apply it? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so geo is right now um, US, you know. Um, I, I don't know, we were talking about how much longer it, it may need to, to be that, but you know, the goal for us with Awesome, honestly, is to sort of plus up something like Techstars, right? To sort of say like, okay, what's the next like iteration of something like that and how do we provide material support to founders that are coming out of an accelerator program. So to, to be clear, um, so Geo Focus is US. I think, you know, right now, um, a lot of what we're, we're thinking about is this idea of, I don't want to say a post COVID world, but a world that um, I think has forever been disrupted um, from a, from a, you know, the way people work and the way they think about work um, standpoint. So we're looking at, um, again, this whole idea of the future of work and the world of work and kind of where that's going. So if anything, that that's like one dimension that is added to our like sector focus, which, um, as I said, is really healthcare, education and, and financial services. And 
fintech with a focus on financial inclusion um, is, is where we've, we, we've been. As you uh, put together that thesis, and it sounds pretty specific, both at a broad level and then in those three sectors, uh, mm-hmm. how much research went into informing, for example, the selection of those three sectors? Yeah, yeah, no, it's a good question. So, I mean, pre- pretty considerable, right? I mean, I, I've had a, a little bit of a, um, I don't know, I guess unfair advantage, you know, working at McKinsey. Uh, just got to see quite a bit in terms of, you know, what the world um, is 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 going to look like or you know perceivably perceivably going to look like in the next three to five years so healthcare um you know if you look at it right now uh depending on who you talk to we spend a, about a trillion dollars a year on healthcare right and and when you look at what's going on in terms of waste um and just like um essentially uh inefficiencies which is a, a good lens to use when you're looking at industries um, we just look at, you know, okay, there's, there's a ton of wastage, um, you know, in that space. And so that was like a, a almost a no-brainer, not to mention the flip side is, again, you know, can this make a world that works for more people or make the world in some, you know, material way better? So check on one side, check on the other side. And same thing with education, tons of inefficiency, um, tons of friction points, um, which we're starting to see now with COVID. Um, and then the same thing, right? Like if done right, you know, can, can that make, make a world that works, that, that works, um, you know, financial services, um, same thing. But I think FinTech was like, for us, like, you know, the canary in the coal mine, which is why there's so many FinTech startups. I think once everyone got wind of the friction points and how much wastage there is in the system just sort of made it, made sense. But, but those are kind of the two lenses, um, you know, that we, that we balance off of, you know, essentially. As you uh, apply the, the sort of thesis, have you come across startups that are outside the thesis um, that you were really excited about? And if so, what did you do? <laughs> yeah, that's a good question. Um, so yes, right. So, so yes. And I, I think, um, what I tried to do is really temper my own excitement. Um, and really like, you know, ask a question around, you know, what am I excited by, right? Like, is this something personal? Um, Which is why I think a a thesis is so important because it actually keeps a bit of a North star. So if you're, you know, varying away from it, you're like, okay, well, why am I varying away? What is this, what box is this checking for me? And, um, And then honestly, what I try to do, which I don't know if it's good advice, but what I try to do is, See if I can force the startup um, into um, at least an aspirin grade, um, you know, posture, right? Like, so it's just shave off things. Um, hey, have you considered that? Um, you know, uh, how, how about if you positioned it to this particular audience? And then, oddly enough, when you do enough of that, it starts to move into, like, one of the sectors that I think... Um, makes sense and that that we're we're best at so it's like you know usually it's like okay what's checking a box for me is that they're not directly in the sweet spot but tangential to it and then trying to see okay is there something to refine like maybe shifting from b to c to a b to b focus right um because a lot of founders you know that i come across are still really b to c and so if anything i'll push them to a b to b to c kind of mindset shave off some things and think about okay can we create some experiments to see if there's some traction. So it's, it's more of just, just like interrogating, you know, my, my own thoughts, the potential I see, and then working with the founder, um, see how open they are to, to, to experimenting, to getting it to a, to a better place. Cause, and I should have said to the top, but we're definitely more B to B or B to B to C focused versus like straight B to C. Got it. Two, two quick things. One for the audience, uh, B to B means if you don't know business. Oh, sorry, company. sorry. No, no worries. No worries. Sorry. Uh, and yeah. B to C, business to consumer. And, and so when he says B uh, to B to C, it's, it's serving uh, businesses that will then serve consumers. Um, no worries, but it's, uh, we have a, yeah. a wide audience here, so level yeah. setting. Yeah, sorry for the jargon, everyone. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> no uh, uh, and the other I'm thing I was jargon light. Yeah. is just to repeat kind of what I'm hearing. So it sounds like you, let's say you find a company outside your thesis, you're really excited about it. Instead of just passing uh, because it right. doesn't fit, you'll, you'll, you'll see if the founder um, can maybe incorporate some of your thesis into their plan and, and 
and have them and be aligned aligned so you can make the investment. Is that right? Yeah, but, but, but I think I think the 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 step before that is really just like like a bit of introspection, right? Like mm-hmm. like what are you excited about? You know, because yeah. so much of investing is about like your own decision making process. So it's just like you know, just like a small conversation with yourself to say like, okay, I just really like this person. Uh, the idea, not so much. You know, just that. You yeah. Know, so yeah. Have, what uh, what tools and please be as you know uh, tactical as possible. Do you use? Mm-hmm. Um, well, did you use in the creation of your thesis, and then do you use in the application yeah. of your thesis? Yeah, so that's a, I mean, for for so, uh, I'm sure I, I don't know how much. Hopefully, you know, people in the audience are familiar with the business model canvas, um, from Al, um, Alex um, Austin Wilder from the you know business model generation book. Um, but, uh, it's, we've modified that a few times and actually used that as a way of, um, intaking startups and to understand like, okay. And it's literally, we've created it into like, you know, what we call sort of like a lean, like a venture canvas, which is literally just putting your entire startup down on, on a slide or, or two for the team. And then just using that, um, as a lens to at least assess like, okay, is this startup you know, um, onto something. Um, because Awesome is an organization, we typically don't pass. Um, it's a membership organization. So if anything, it's just, you know, we'd add you to a membership, provide content, provide, you know, um, virtual coaching resources and try to help you get to, to traction. But mm-hmm. um, yeah, I think from a tool standpoint, that Canvas is pretty important because it kind of just helps us to like assess you know, what problem are you solving? What opportunity do you see and how you're doing it? What milestones, what hypotheses you, you know, and, and we've modified it actually to add um, a tool, we, you know, a, a portion called um, essentially hinge hypotheses, right? So, and I don't, um, I didn't see anything like that on the original business model canvas. And so we added it, but it was this idea of like, um, what are the hypotheses that you have um, about your startup that if you're wrong, will kill it? Right. Mm-hmm. And allowing you to like really like explore, um, hey, what are some of the things that I think is true? I haven't proved, proven it to be true, but I think it's true. Some things you could be wrong about and be OK. Some things you could be wrong about and your startup will be dead because it's just directly correlated to your business model, to your, you know, unit economics, like, you know, whatever it is. So so and I'm a big believer, I should say, to and I mean, these aren't sort of like tools they're more like mental models right so like i'm a big believer in socratic thinking and just like asking questions and posing you know things that might there might be a statement in the form of a question and the hinge hypothesis kind of helps you to unlock that like what are some of the like four questions you have about your startup that or the four assumptions that you're making you know we think people will pay x month dollars for y you know so whatever it is and then you just go out and improve it no, I feel like I'm hearing uh, some of your consulting background playing in this. No, you know, it's it's, it's, it's yes, a yes, yes, thing. Yeah. Meaning, meaning on that yeah. in, in, in the experience. Yeah. You know, other books that uh, you'd recommend the audience read to kind of come up to speed on some of these mental models to help them craft their thesis and, and apply it. Yeah. Um, wow. How much time do you have, Cindy? I, I, I may have to follow. I may have to follow up in, in after, but but some immediate ones that I always push people to. Um, uh, so one is called "Get Backed" um, by Evan Loomis. Um, and "Get Backed" is all about creating a pitch deck, right? But it, it's it's the only book I've seen that's completely focused on how to create, a, a, you know, in you know, a venture grade or investor grade pitch deck and to story tell. Um, so that's one, I mean, the classic ones, you know, startup owners manual by Steve Blank. Well, so it's, so thick, are, but, but it's good. I, I guess, sorry. And, and, um, for the, investor, or you mean, or you mean the investor, investor, investor. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Got it. Got it. Got it. Um, so I think, um, yeah, uh, I mean, I'm, I'm a fan of, I mean, this may sound weird, but I, I actually like, um, uh, value proposition design. And again, this is my own bias, but like value proposition design is is about like how to actually create, and it's written by the same author who wrote Business Model uh, Generation, Alex um, Austin Wilder. But um, that that I think is a, to me it's a good book to at least because it's very skimmable, 
uh, but it's all about helping you understand um, from a diligence standpoint. It's not about angel investing, to be clear, but it is about like, how do you assess, you know, if an audience um, that your, you know, idea is going after, or maybe a company that you're evaluating, if they're checking boxes that, that say like, okay, they've done the research to align that this is our audience, this is their pain points, here are the things they care about and jobs to be done um, that they have in their, in their minds, and here's how our startup aligns. It, it just kind of gives you a framework to assess, like, like is there a there there? So that, that's a personal favorite um, for, for, for me to just kind of like level set my thinking. And then obviously, um, I actually like uh, David Rose's book, An Angel Investing, that um, mm -hmm. I think I think it's pretty pretty good um, as well, yeah. and he has actually has a, another book about, you know, a startup checkbooks book that that's also also interesting. Um, yeah. again, sometimes I feel it's helpful for the investor to get into the mind of the of like what creating a good company is to just totally. help their diligence. Totally, to help them make investment decisions. Going back yeah. to sort of thesis creation, um, yeah, w w when you put together your thesis and started doing the research to figure out the sectors to apply it against, et cetera. Were there yeah. um, other firms that you kind of researched in and, you know, with admiration and, and said, Hey, I can learn something by emulating or replicating what the firm X or Y did. Were there any kind of models you, you emulated? You, you mean in terms of uh, different people's thesis? thesis and yeah. Like, so for example, Cheryl gave the uh, example of USV. Like, were there any firms that you said, as you put yeah. together your thesis, you're like, you know what? I really like, mm -hmm this firm's approach or these three firms approaches, mm -hmm. am I going to, how can I borrow from what they've learned and how they've done? Yeah, not, not, not so much. I mean, I, I you know, like if, if anything, I should say like we're inspired by could mm -hmm. probably be sure. fair. Yeah. Yeah. But it wasn't, it, it's more of, it's more of like, like we did, it's not so much like we didn't have a thesis and then we looked and they said, Hey, let's, sort of, it was more like, hey, you know, I like what Andreessen Horowitz sort of, this whole idea of like software upending and being a disruptive force, check. Like, I, lo I love that yeah. and how that's put together. Um, it's perfect. Then, Do you have other sort of checks that you're yeah. like, you know, I'm gonna borrow this from here, or borrow this from there that you, where else did you borrow from? Or yeah, where, where I else mean, um, you know, honestly, we borrowed from places like, uh, and, and this may be unfamiliar to people here, but, but um, like uh, Endeavor, which is a um, you know global um, organization that that uh, basically does investing uh, in startup founders in you know, all around the world and uses startups as a theory of change. I don't. It's not just tech startups, but any kind of startups. But Endeavor.org, um, Rock Health uh, was another one um, mm -hmm. that we looked at, like um, Acumen. Um, you know, mm -hmm. basically people who are trying to balance like doing good and doing well, and and being rigorous on both ends, right? So. Awesome. So those are some of the ones that I know we looked at um, those and, are great. and yeah, you know, so yeah, but, but, you know, but more of those than like the standard, like BC, uh, you know, firms, except for I think Andreessen um, was, was, was a big one because they, they have like an operator hands-on approach as well, right. which, 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 which is, is cool. Yeah, no, I think, I think the, the point is, is uh, at least to me is, you know, first of all, figure out what, what inspires you, what you want your thesis to be, go yeah. get, uh, to go to some research to figure out how to apply, um, you know, that thesis, maybe in certain sectors yeah. and then look out into the world and see who else is doing something broadly similar yeah. um, and that may have sort of gone through this exercise before and see maybe what you can learn from yeah. that. For you, it was very about mission alignment. It's you found incredibly uh, successful mission driven organizations yeah. to borrow from. If someone else, yeah. different thesis, they can borrow from someone else. Yeah, and to actually, too, and you said that I would be totally remiss if I forgot to mention, but Kapor Capital, yep. huge, huge like source. Actually, they released a report, a report on the value of impact investing and investing in underrepresented. That just changed a lot, like for us. Mm -hmm. um, I would also say, lastly, Village Capital, which yep. is um, also, you know, same thing. Like these are all players that are, you know, really looking at, you know, systemic change and how they put money towards it. I know and respect all of them. To, and I, I, yeah. These are all, all good ones yeah. to, uh, to see, you know, what, what could uh, be inspired. Um, yeah. If you yeah. Put your own thesis together. Let's talk a little bit about failures. Uh, you know, as you've applied the thesis, I know, I'm not sure how long you've been 
um, investing against it. But tell me a story maybe of a failure. Um, now it could be in how it was applied. It could be in a company that you sort of forced because it was a great thesis fit, but maybe didn't check other boxes. Right. Any, any right. kind of lessons learned that uh, you can share? Yeah. So, um, so, so we're still, we're, we're still pretty new, right? So we're, we're, we're just um, active, I'd say under a year. So um, fingers crossed, Sandeep, there's no failures. <laughs> no, but, um, but I think the, the closest thing that I can talk about, um, and I'm just trying to think through how to frame this is, um, yeah, preserving, you the, know, so, so, so yeah, 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 yeah. So, so, so working on a startup. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, 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 so working with a company that, um, is in a very interesting space. Um, it's one of those, like, you, you know, it's, it's a space that is not like well enough defined. It's, it's definitely a B to C kind of thing. And this is a perfect example of kind of what I was talking about in terms of trying to retrofit it, but, but it's in a space that, that helps people with, um, you know, some of the challenges they have with, um, you know, uh, I'm trying to think about how to obscure it enough, but, but, you know, you know, essentially it's just, you know, a, 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 let's say that there's, um, you know, like as a, as a person, there's like too many things that you have and you want to figure out a way to, to, you know, offload some of that. Right. Sure. So, so I'm trying to like think through, um, and, and again, it's not a failure, but it's more of just like working with the, you know, founder who's, who's in the business of, you know, okay, is it a logistics play? Is it a, a mm -hmm. social good kind of play um is it an environmental thing and 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 he's amazing um and um you know the the thought for me was just around um uh how do we actually um make this something that um scales um outside of the standard like b to c um uh you know like we got to buy a bunch of ads we got to you know like, like, how do we actually um, be additive from an yep. um, adoption standpoint um, and help them think through essentially a distribution strategy? Because the product is strong, the idea um, strong, but there's certain key, key things around like unit, unit economics and just market traction that he's like working diligently on, we're working diligently on it to be partners and, and think about with him. And to his credit, I mean, it was literally said, well, you know, um, I'm going to do X and Y. And if X and Y don't work, then I'm just going to move on something else. Right. Mm -hmm. Like, mm -hmm. you know, like, I mean, and this is after putting in a, a ton of time around yeah. it. And to be honest, um, and someone told me this, I'm a two-time founder myself. And, and someone told me this um, a while ago, but, but as an investor, you invest in horses. I mean, in jockeys, not horses. Yeah. Right. And so um, it's really important to kind of interrogate again, someone's decision-making process. Cause it's, yeah. there's, there's one thing to be stubborn and persevere. And there's another thing that's like, okay, like again, back to the hint hypothesis, right? Like if, if we can't do X and Y, like, I'm, you know, our hypothesis about the whole underpinning of the business is probably off and, yeah. and, and, and to shift it would just mean we'd be in another business anyway. So yeah. we should look at that, you know, so, so I actually appreciated that versus like rosy picture, yeah. like everything's going to be great no matter what. And, um, and I'm going to do this until I'm dead, I'm dead. Like it's going to, yeah, yeah. you know, like some people approach it that way. Think it's yeah, yeah, yeah. like being, you know? <laughs> yeah. So I, so just to repeat so. back kind of the takeaways from that anecdote, I'd say that maybe at least for me, there are two. One is, um, know what kind of founder you're betting on. Uh, is it one who, yeah. uh, is to your point, kind of, a, a you're investing in the jockey and, and this is their current um, execution path and it is a great thesis fit. Um, but Hey, you know, you know, and they know that, in six months, they might pivot into something totally off thesis and, and right. you need to be okay with that. Right. Or right. Right. Um, do you invest in a founder that maybe uh, for whatever reason, isn't quite um, uh, the type that would kind of go from idea to idea, but they're going to be in this space no matter what. Um, and so mm -hmm. maybe you know, there's a give and take as to what kind of founder you're investing in and you kind of are on the same page about how this might turn out. And in the former case, um, if you, and this has happened, I know to me and many others, it's like you invest in a business, you invest in a founder that's totally on thesis and you get an email mm -hmm. or and you're, and you're <laughs> totally different. And you're like, wait, what? This is not what I invested in. Um, but, but being kind of okay with right, that. Right, right, right. right because you, right. at the end of the day, you invested right. in the founder. Yeah, yeah. And, and I think too, I think 
really looking at what the reporting mechanism looks like, you know, because, and I literally just told a friend of this on, on Sunday or Saturday, but it was literally like, you know, really think about essentially issuing some kind of like change log for investors, right? Mm -hmm. Like literally saying like, you know, monthly and, and don't, don't, cause some, cause some people do a monthly, you know, update, but then you don't, you don't have the other months that they've been doing. So I'm like, dude, don't delete anything. Just put whatever new thing, like in the four different facets you want to track, like biz dev and, you know, revenue, whatever, and just, and just keep it going. You know what I mean? And then just send that out and, and mm -hmm. do it at a regular cadence that everyone can expect. So if you don't see this month and it's been two months, like you're like, okay, I got to yeah. like, I may have to make a call or this may flag something in my air table or something. And, uh, you know, and I need to, or, or whatever tool I'm using to track. Um, yeah. Awesome. Look, I think we're out of time. I just want to say a huge thank you. I, I, I know I learned a lot about kind of the mental model you have and how you approach thesis yeah. creation and application. Yeah. Um, Cheryl, yeah. I don't know if there's any uh, questions for the audience you want to try to get to, or if you want to take a break. Uh, hey, everyone. Sure. Um, so we did have, uh, I think, one of two, one or two questions that I'd like to maybe tackle here. I guess um, one of them for Fritz was really about what would you define a foundation and core values to be key that you look for in a startup, especially at an so idea or validation stage? You so said, what are the foundations or core values, values that you find are key for a startup? in the idea and the valuation uh idea yeah. validation stage yeah so i think um again just going back to this idea of is it aspirin grade and who is it aspirin for and just to unpack that like a tiny bit it's just literally saying like okay is this aspirin or vitamin like is this a must-have is this a you know painkiller versus like a nice to have you know, hey, I could take it, but I don't remember to take it. So to me, that, that aspirin grade view is um, super important because it's just as like, hey, this is something that, that, you know, again, you have to have. As far as, as, far as values, um, yeah, I mean, for me, I think uh, being transparent is key. Understanding is there a structured way that they work. So I, I do ask questions like, you know, how do you plan your roadmap? Or can I see the roadmap? Or, um, you know, how, how often does you, you, you know, you and your team meet? Like, what's the, you know, are you working using an agile framework? And agile is just a, a, you know, a methodology that's used to, you know, build software that says like, okay, you know, we're going to like plan our work, work quickly and, and iteratively and, and not um, spend a ton of time building without validating like someone wants this. <laughs> so, so to me, to, to me, if, if a team has some of that and at least they understand that, that approach mm -hmm. to, to development is helpful because then you could just like validate early with a prototype. I mean, I tell founders all the time, like you don't need to write a line of code. I mean, you could just sketch it on a paper or hire someone on Upwork for $150. And, you know, I mean, there's all kinds of things you could do to just validate with your audience, you know, how would this work for you mm -hmm. um, or what would this need to be? So to me, I, I strongly look at that. Like, you know, are they, do they care about research? Do they care about talking to their market? You know, have they talked to a hundred potential customers and, you know, like, are they doing that sort of, do they have that kind of work ethic essentially? Got it. Um, um, we actually have yeah. one more question that I'd like to, to answer uh, you to answer sure. because it actually is interesting. So if you could choose yeah. between a startup that can scale with lesser impact versus the opposite, less scale, but more impact, which one would you choose? I'm not sure how those two things are not correlated. So, so you know what I mean? So I, I would want to know, like, is impact a euphemism <laughs> Say like the or yo scale app. a euphemism for money? Or... But it's scaled very fast <laughs> versus... Wait, wait, say again. It's what? Say, say it's the like yo the app. yo app. Do you remember the yo yeah, app? Yeah. So yeah, like yeah, yeah, that yeah. scaled very quickly versus like... Yeah, yeah. So, so, yeah so, so that falls in the realm of candy grade. So that's like, that's candy. And yeah, we don't invest in candy. Like, um, because it just, I mean, just, uh, you know, outside of our thesis, like, I don't, no matter how much money, or whatever, it's more of like, okay, at the Here's end of the soul, day, though. Candy does. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Well, yeah, that's you great. Just said, you just told me a lot about you. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I mean, in these times, you need to <laughs> do what you can. Okay. Yes. 